previously on Backroads Angling. This is the ice hole, and that is, we're in three feet of water or something, and that's our bait down there at the desired depth. Simply wrap this twice around this middle trigger bar, and then set the trigger bar, set the flag like that. Then when a fish comes along and pulls the line, the line releases and goes down the hole and the fish can free spool. The flag goes up, you know that you've got a fish. What I've got here is I've got a loop in the eyelet of my rod. Then what I, what I do is I take the loop, you go underneath the kill bar and over that nail. Um, and then you just get the slightest little pressure from a bite. Boom, you've got them. Hey, welcome to Backwards Angling. Ice fishing season is upon us. So last year I shared with you a homemade hook setter and a homemade iFish Pro. I feel like the devices that I made last year worked pretty well, but we can always improve upon them. And one way that we can improve upon them is by combining the capabilities of both into one device so that we don't have to carry around as much. So that's what I've done. Um, I'm gonna walk you through the build that I did. I basically took the iFish Pro that we built last year and I added a few modifications to make it so it has hook setting capabilities. It wasn't that hard, and uh, now I'm gonna be trying it out throughout the year. So yeah, I'm excited to get to the build and show you what I've done. Shouldn't take too long, 10, 15 minutes, and uh, yeah, we'll have it. Thanks for watching Backwards Angling. Let's do it. Okay, so I just took my old iFish Pro, the one that is linked in the video below, and first thing I did was open up this hole, make it bigger. A lot of people commented on that last time. I kind of knew going in that I should open the hole wider and uh, but a lot of people picked up on that so I just took a saw and opened this part up so I've got the hook setter portion that wasn't too hard I just as I showed before I just screwed it in and made it tight so one thing that I am going to do for the hook the, for the the iFish Pro part is I'm going to need some room over here um, for the second trigger so I cut out this little piece there's probably room for it to actually be there, but I didn't want it to interfere in any way with that trigger so or get caught on or anything, so I, I removed that. So the way I had originally thought of doing this is to use this one trigger for both the hook setter, if you set it up here, or the iFish Pro if you hang it on this pedestal over here. The one problem that I did see with that was when it was setting, um, the slip stop that I'm going to use to hang on that trigger, it would probably get caught on that trigger, and so there's not going to be a clean release. Uh, I decided to drop that idea and set up a little hook here to put my second trigger on. That hook just came from the mousetrap. You can see I just pulled that out and I hammered it in right there. And then I just took one of these triggers off of the mousetrap. And you can see that I, I cut it down. I took this little rounded part off of here and I clipped it down. So now my trigger is about two inches long. You can adjust it however you want. Um, I made it as short as possible just because I didn't want it getting hung up when it goes down the hole. I wanted a, as clean a release as possible, and the smaller this trigger is, the less problem it's going to have getting caught on something, okay? All I did was I took this trigger off of the mousetrap, cut it down, put it on this hook over here, make sure it's got, it, it can move around freely and everything's good there. Um, and then what I did, you can see here, is I took a toothbrush, I clipped it down, clipped the end off, and you can see how... I cut the bristles off the end, and then I left most of the bristles in the back. And this gives me different sensitivity settings, so I can set the trigger in the front of the toothbrush, and it's gonna be pretty sensitive. But if I'm using something like a sucker or a shiner or something that's uh, it's a lot stronger bait and can actually set it off, set the trigger off itself, uh, I can put it back here in the bristles, and that's gonna be almost impossible for the shiner to set loose, but if a pike or something like that comes and grabs it, it's gonna set it loose really easily, okay? So I like that, that's an upgrade over the iFish Pro that I demonstrated last year because that iFish Pro is super sensitive, but it doesn't have different sensitivity settings. So what I did was I took a little piece of wood, and this wood is a half inch thick, and that was about perfect to raise this toothbrush up off of the wood, and that's about the right height, about a half inch off. You can see how I've got it positioned where the end of the toothbrush comes right to the edge of the hole. I want the trigger to move uh, this way. I want it to fly out this way. If you put it right over the hole and the fish pulls, it's just going to go down. Uh, one minor adjustment I made with the flag was I clipped it down quite a bit. I took a couple inches off at least and I moved. You can see this is from my old last year demonstration. 
I moved the flag up here. I don't need the flag to be that long, and actually when it's shorter, it's not gonna get tangled up in my line or my rod. So you can see now, we've got a lot of room here. The line's gonna be coming here, and there's gonna be a, a bit of distance between the flag and the rod. First demonstrating the iFish Pro, the way I do this is I just wrap my flag up so that it's not gonna get tangled. When it pops out, if there's any sort of wind or anything, it's gonna release the flag. So you can wrap it up like this, and remember you can adjust it up and down. It's a good idea to not have your flag go past the trigger very much. So just a little bit of the end sitting on the trigger. Uh, the smaller amount you put there, the less that's gonna get in the way. As soon as that trigger gets pulled a little bit, it's gonna fly this way, the trigger's gonna fly the other way, and they're not gonna be um, competing for space there. Last year we talked about wrapping the string around the trigger. Um, with the mousetrap, I, I feel like that works pretty well. Um, with this setup, I've been having better luck getting it to release cleanly with uh, using the slip stops from iFish Pro. So I would recommend using one of these slip stops. You could also probably figure out a way to use like a, a, a swivel, um, like a two-way swivel or something like that, as long as it gets caught on the bobber stop. So what I've done here is I've put a bobber stop at my desired depth. We can go ahead and set up that slip stop. Okay, so that slip stop is resting on the trigger. And then the fish comes and pulls. It gets a really clean release, okay? Uh, so let's do it again. Say you're fishing for pike and you've got a big bait on there. In that case, I'm gonna wedge the trigger clear back here so that if my shiner or my uh, sucker or something is pretty lively, it can't pull that loose, okay? So it's gonna take a, a little bit bigger pull from a pike and then it pulls down the hole, okay? So, I don't know, I feel, I'm pretty happy with that. I think it's gonna work out really well. Let's say, as is the case for me most of the time when I'm using these, the fish are biting really sensitively, they're not holding onto the bait very long. In that case, we want to use the hook setter. So what I'll do is I'll just take off the flag, put that to the side somewhere. Okay, so you, when you wanna do the hook setter, you just set the trap first. I find that's the easiest way to do it. Have your loop on the end of your rod. Be very careful not to get the rod near your face. Okay, slightest little pull. And you got them. So I'm also gonna be testing out. So this was my old iFish Pro setup. So I put the flag on the other side I moved the rod holder to the opposite side as well. So it's basically, I'm inverting the iFish Pro that I talked about last year. Last year, I, I talked about having the mousetrap for the iFish Pro on this side of the hole, so I'm flipping it over to this side. And the reason that I like that is because now the flag and the trigger bar are gonna be flying in opposite directions. So the trigger comes out towards me, the flag goes in the other direction, and I think that is going to make a, an even cleaner release than what we had before. Um, I've got the hook setter set up as I've got it set up over there. So this is going to be just a different style of hook setter slash iFish Pro. Wrap my flag up. Put it underneath the trigger here. Okay. So you can see in this case you've got the slip stop or you can wrap your line either way. Uh, and then the same as before. Line goes down the hole. And when that bobber stop hits, that's a pretty nice little setup. The only thing that's gonna work differently with that one is that this, this, thing, this thing is super, super sensitive. So if you are using any kind of active bait that's gonna pull on the line very hard, I would go with this guy. So these are two different ways you can modify your DIY iFish Pro to be also a hook setter. All right, everybody, there it was, the iFish Pro hook setter combination build. I think it's gonna save us a lot of room in our sled, um, now that we only have to carry around one device as opposed to two. I'm gonna be using it throughout the year, as I mentioned earlier, 
and you can follow along and see how it's gonna work. I think it's gonna work fine. The, we didn't really change anything about the hook setter. It's just slid over a little bit, so it, it should work the same. The iFish Pro I think is gonna work better because now we have that toothbrush in there, which is gonna modify the sensitivity, and so based on the bait that we have, we can adjust that. Okay, so my heater is kicked on. It's gonna drown me out here with the audio, but I will say uh, in conclusion that I'm gonna see you very soon with some hook setter and iFish Pro videos. Once the ice is, is thick enough, I'm gonna be out there, first ice. Um, and yeah, I think we're going to have fun this ice fishing season trying these devices. I really appreciate all the support and I will see you soon. Happy holidays. Bye bye. Hello everyone. Welcome to Backroads Angling. Uh, ah. Hello. Welcome to Backroads Angling. I am getting ready to do another DIY project. Um, ow. Ouch.